Okay, we're here in the 750 stall getting ready to go to a virtual demo flight uh, in the 750 stall with the Jabber engine. Um, we're going to get ready to start the engine. Clear. And nice start, and nice start there. Well, let's listen to the weather here in Mexico, Missouri. One six Zulu weather wind two three zero at seven visibility one zero clear below one two thousand temperature one seven Celsius two point seven altimeter three zero one four. Okay, so we got the the winds are about two three zero. We'll probably just I'm going to go ahead and probably use like runway one eight. Uh, that's a little shorter, and then uh, if I want to land on the grass, I've got a little makeshift uh, grass runway right beside it. And we're going to begin our taxi down to uh, runway 1A. So what I'm going to simulate to here today is a virtual rudder, or a demo flight. Uh, we just had our virtual rudder workshop, and uh, typically during our rudder workshops, we give a demo flight for each one of our customers, or any potential customers come to the factory at demo flight. So today I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to simulate or pretend that uh, I have my customer right next to me doing a demo flight. And uh, we'll go through the normal, normal taxi in uh, pre-flight, uh, run up, and then uh, take off, do some maneuvers out, uh, uh, out in the area, and then come back. Maybe do a couple landings. I would say, uh, if you have any questions, ask me, and we'll demonstrate and show. But uh, that's not going to happen today. And we got the center stick here, uh, which is uh, the center Y stick, which is a standard option or standard uh, stick for the 750s. Um, we do have an option for the dual stick. I would say 98% uh, of our customers stay with the Y stick. Uh, the reason is it's uh, a lot easier to get in and out. Anytime you have a, a stick between your legs, it just makes it a little bit more complicated. Uh, customers have... Uh, made the dual stick where you can make it uh, easy, easy detachable. Um, we don't offer that. Uh, we leave that up to the owner, which is an excellent idea. And we're going to we're going to check our traffic in the pattern. I don't see if I haven't heard anybody. In yeah, Mexico traffic thermal 750 is going to back taxi for runway 18 Mexico. when we get down to the end of the run, run up area. We'll do a run up, uh, make sure our temperatures and everything are in a proper setting. We have, uh, while everything's warming up, uh, give you a little uh, information on the uh, instrument panel that we have. And we have the Dynon HDX 10 inch screen. Um, we've been using that since they've come out with the new screen. Uh, great features. I really have never had any issues. Easy to hook up. Uh, this particular aircraft, uh, it was the older model on the instrument panel, so we do still have the Garmin the SL40 and Garmin transponder. We offer an instrument package with the Dynon, which will come with uh, the new their Dynon's new comm radio and intercom system and the transponder. So this is a little outdated. Um, we do offer the Dynon complete package and uh, a Garmin package now as well. So we're letting our oil temperatures warm up and then we'll do ignition check. The left, right, both, and then carb heat. At this time I typically uh, I'll uh, I'll ask the passenger, uh, you know, check their doors, lock, make sure they're locked well for them. Um, seat belts all nice and secure. Uh, we've got the new bubble doors, which we've offered in the last year. It's a, it's a metal, aluminum, three-quarter inch metal frame, aluminum frame, uh, all the way around as support. And then the, the glass is pre-blown for the stole for three-inch bubble. And then if you want, you could get an inch and a half a smaller, which, you know, it might increase your cruise speed just a hair, but not much. 
And they're really nice, uh, very solid, very rigid. You can taxi with the doors up. Today is just a little cooler, so we didn't taxi with the doors up. All right, so we're going to run it up. Uh, let me see. I can change the dyno on screen, uh, get all the engine parameters a little higher or a little bigger so we can visually see them. There's our RPM. I don't know if you, if you can see the RPM. We're going to run it up to 1,700 and uh, hold our brakes. And right there, 1,700. So we're going to go to the right, check our, see how much is dropping. Go back to both and left. And it's dropping about 15, 20 RPMs. Back to both, and then we're going to check our carb heat. Carb heat's dropping a little bit. Yep, back in. And then I get a lot of questions too about you know the brakes and everything. So we're going to run up to the run it up, see how well the brakes are holding. Yeah, I'm at 21, 2200 RPM right now. And there's there's 2200 RPM, 20, almost 23. So I mean. Uh, they're going to hold for what you need in this aircraft. Then we're going to check our controls, deflections. Uh, everything's going the proper uh, direction. Full, full move travel. And then we're going to lower the flaps all the way. Check our deflection again. Control input. Yep, great. And then we're going to bring our flaps all the way up. And then uh, for takeoff, I like to use about half flaps. So we're going to go down about halfway which is uh, full flaps are 15 degrees and half would be, you know, seven, seven and a half degrees. Okay, we're going to change our screen back to the map setting and then we have our engine perimeters on the bottom side. Gas is on. We've got uh, fuel in our tanks. And now we're just waiting for the oil just to get up to maybe a few more degrees. So what we're going to do in this demo flight today is uh, we're going to do uh, a relatively short takeoff. We're not going to go extreme. Uh, we're going to show you how short it is without going extreme. And then we're going to climb out and get out of the area just a little bit and uh, do some uh, steep turns, slow flight, power off stall, and just level flight. And then we'll come back in and do a landing. All right. I think we're ready to go. Check traffic. I don't hear anybody, I don't see anybody in the pattern. What I like to do is I like to have the stick all the way back, brakes, apply brakes, release the brakes, and then the nose comes up, and then I'll, I will go forward with the stick just a little bit so the nose is not up so high so I can see if there is any traffic or bird or obstacles in the way. In Mexico, traffic spring 750 stalls will be departing runway 18 and will be a uh, east departure from Mexico. We're going to add power and release the brakes. Nose comes up, go forward to stick a little bit, a little bit of right rudder, and just let it fly right on off. There you go. And we got a little bit of crosswind. Uh, I think it's like a 2309. Brought our flap, flaps up, cleared our obstacle. And typically once I, once I get a little bit airborne, uh, I might bring back power just a little bit. Uh, this aircraft has such great performance, there's no reason to keep it on firewall um, all the time. It's just a little choppy today, it should be. Um, got the clouds are <laughs> developing a little bit of thermals. We're going to turn to the east, add a little bit of rudder. Leaving altitude. And let's smooth it out a little bit. Mexico traffic, spread all two hours through the crossing 1836. And that's one of our local uh, 701 uh, builders pilots. He's got a 701 uh, Dennis, and uh, he typically flies about every day. He goes somewhere locally, and uh, you know these stole airplanes. Uh, they're just great little aircraft. Just great aircraft just to go out and sightsee. You don't have to go somewhere fast. All right, let's climb up. Uh, let's get up about 2,000 feet.
in these demo flights, I don't like to, uh, you know, you, you have to learn about your customer. So you want to, you want the comfort, your customer to be very comfortable. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to start out with a shallow bank turn, and then we're going to maybe increase it a little bit, show them a little bit of steeper turn. All right, so let's, uh, let's maintain 2,000 feet. We're going to trim it out. There's not a lot of trim that's needed in this aircraft. Um, the nose is quite a bit down compared to some aircraft. And I got power setting at uh, 2650, and I'm burning 5.3 gallons an hour, and cruising mid 90s. Uh, typically, the Jabber engine you can run at uh, 2850 continuously, and I should be close to 95, 96 miles an hour, and that would be about uh, a little over six gallons an hour at that setting. Right now, we're showing at uh, 2650, 2700, uh, 5.1 gallons an hour. So that's not too bad. In my uh, in my experience. Uh, Majority of all 100 horse engines, you might as well say that you're going to be burning six gallons an hour at 75% power, uh, power setting. All right, so we got uh, level flight there, and we're going to do a shallow turn here. And the nice thing about Chris's design is, is when you go even in a shallow bank turn, I can see right over the skylight. So I can see all my traffic in front of me and behind me, or in front of me and, and to my side. And we're low out there, and we're going to do one back to the right. And we'll just maintain back to the south heading. Very easy to maneuver. And what I do is I like to add a little bit of rudder uh, for the direction I'm going in first, and it, uh, it just makes the ailerons a lot lighter. To, uh, to move. And we're going to do a little bit uh, steeper turn, a 45 degree bank turn. And you just put the nose right on the horizon. It's a little choppy. And we're gonna we're gonna bring it right Mexico up. traffic spin on nine seven two Alpha Zulu turning two four to the northwest, Mexico. And we're gonna bring it right into the wind and we're gonna pull the car beat because we're gonna do some slow flight. Okay, we've got it in the flap setting, which is eighty miles an hour. We're gonna lower the flaps a little bit. Slow flight is a, is a good number. You definitely can uh, fly it a lot slower than I'm going to show you today. But uh, nice speed is in the 40s. Uh, you got a lot of control, a lot of visibility, and nothing's going to happen very quickly. A lot of control. See, so, yeah, I'm doing some turns. Lightly. There you go. Then we'll bring it back right onto the heading. And then we're going to do a power off stall. You bring the power all the way back. And stick all the way back and you'll find that uh, all you're going to do is develop a high sink rate and that's all we're doing we're sinking 800 feet a minute and we're going to use that elevator effect elevator effect uh, for landing very short because we're going to maintain a little higher approach clear our obstacles and then maintain try to maintain that sink rate using a little bit of power if we feel like we're coming in a little bit uh, uh, steep, then we're going to uh, we're going to add a little bit of power, and we'll just fly around for a few minutes and let everybody get a good sight of the picture of the aircraft. The 750 Stoll uh, makes a nice grass aircraft going into grass runways or short fields. Um, today we were going to, I was going to show you demonstrate coming in a grass runway, but unfortunately we've had a lot of rain and it looks like the grass is, it's relatively tall. 
Um, so I just don't want to, I don't know how wet it is, and then the grass is pretty tall. I don't want to get my grass all in the, in the, in the our prop all in the grass. Uh, we have, uh, the, the wheels I have on here now are the 21 inch uh, on my mains. Um, and the nose is uh, the standard comes in the kit. Um, we're having a lot of customers uh, putting the big Alaska bush wheels. I believe they're, they have 26 inches, they have 29 inches, which is going to give you more of a ground clearance for, you know, you know if you go into, you know, grass that's a little taller than normal. Different engines you could use for the 750s, uh, you know, a lot of customers, uh, the Jabru, the Rotax. UL Power, Vikings become real popular, uh, William Wynn's Corvair engine, um, Continental 0200, 0235, and it really just it depends on what your mission is for the aircraft or, uh, you know, what kind of budget you're on. Um, you know, you want to find something that works best for you. Don't uh, don't decide what everybody else is doing. Um, you know, if you just want to get up in the air and sightsee, and you're taking off from airports, and you're not going in a short strip or coming out of a, you know, 300 foot strip with little obstacles, then you don't need a you know high performance engine. You know, an O200 Continental will work just fine. I've probably got over a thousand hours with the O200 and the 750. Man, I thought it was the greatest thing until you go to the you know next lighter engine with a lot of horsepower. But uh, there was nothing wrong with it at all. Uh, so, you know, you just got to look and see what your mission is. Uh, the Jabber has worked well. We've I probably got over, you know, 1,500, 2,000 hours with the Jabber and the 750. And it uh, works great. All right. Well, let's, uh, we're going to go in and we're going to do a couple landings. Uh, we're going to... We're going to probably, uh, probably both of them were just probably going to maintain on the hard surface today just because of the tall grass. Get down to our pattern altitude and uh, we'll try to get over here and enter a pattern. Get out here from the airport. Uh, it's a beautiful day here in Missouri. Uh, we're in, uh, starting a spring. Great time to be flying. Um, one of the questions uh, my customers always ask me is, uh, hey, you know, do I need to get transition training? Well, the question is, really, you should get transition training, even if it's uh, one takeoff and one landing in any aircraft. And it's not knowing how, to, how you fly the aircraft, but it's just uh, knowing the systems and, and just getting a little, uh, little information from somebody else that's already got the experience. Is it difficult to fly? No. Um, it's, uh, you know, once you've done one or two takeoff and landings, you're just going to really start to get the hang for it. And there's, we've got a lot, of, a lot of 750 builders out there that would be more than willing to, you know, take you up, go around the patch, and uh, even if they don't let you fly, just to show you how, how they can take off and land. And, you know, sometimes that's all it takes is just getting, feeling how, getting that depth perception, feeling how it feels. Okay, so we're going to get ready to enter into the, the pattern here at the 45 for the downwind. And Mexico traffic, Spring Bowl 750 stole is going to be entering the left downwind for only 1-8 Mexico. And I can see the wind sock. Uh, we definitely have, you know, a crosswind. It almost looks direct crosswind from here. Uh, the wind sock's not straight out, but it is definitely hanging out. So we're going to do our uh, downwind check, uh, gas undercarriage, picture prop seat belts. We do have car B. We're going to pull that. And we had a bird right there on our downwind. Got to keep your eyes open. Uh, always keep your head out of the cockpit. Okay, so a beam in numbers. I'll bring back power. We're in the flap setting. Lower the flaps about 10%, 20%, and start our uh, descent. And our flap range is uh, anything below 80 miles an hour. Approaching altitude. And trimming a little bit. I like to have a little bit of heavy stick. I don't like it where it's uh, hands off. Uh, that way, if I have to do a go around, I, I don't have to go the opposite trim that way, too. We're going to maintain a little bit higher approach than you do your normal Cessna, Piper, Mooney. 
Uh, that way uh, you can land a lot shorter and you develop that sink rate like we did in the stall. And uh, you, as you'll see, I'm not going to get all crazy and uh, try to do something that nobody else can do. I'm going to try to show you guys that uh, any low time pilot can uh, perform in the 750. And Mexico, try to experiment with turning base final 18 Mexico. And we'll probably do a touch and go, we'll see. Otherwise, we'll do a full stop and then back taxi and just kind of go around again. And once I get on final, I'm going to deploy the rest of the flaps. Uh, it's a good, good practice, that way you know you can make it. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, is you know, stole aircraft. If you're coming in a short strip, uh, you know, it's uh, a lot of times you don't have an option. You know, once you're committed, you're committed. So just remember that. And we're keeping a little bit of power. If you all want to know speed, you know, I'm right now at 50, 51 miles an hour, and. Uh, you can come in, it will slow a lot faster here in a second. It'll go down, it'll go down to 42 right now, just bringing the nose up just barely. Okay. Just going to keep the stick, going to keep the stick. And keep the nose back, keep the nose back. And we're going to flaps up a little bit, and we're going to add, add carb heat, and carb heat, and then we're going to stick back, nose comes up. Now we're going to come around again. We're not going to show you, uh, you know, a steep approach. We're going to show you more of a normal uh, landing, like a conventional, like a Cessna. We're going to maintain a little flatter approach, a little bit more speed, and you know, something that you would do on your first few, you know, 10 or 15 takeoff or landings. And as you see, it's not going to be too much different than what I did on the first landing. Just a choppy little day. Leaving altitude. All right, Mexico traffic, Spermo 750 is turning left downward for runway 18 Mexico. Okay, gas undercarriage, mixture prop, seat belts. Looks good. We're gonna pull our car beat. We're on the downwind side. And you know you don't need to maintain a certain airspeed. Uh, typically, on the 750, still on a downwind. Whatever you feel comfortable with yourself, or whatever you're used to. Another aircraft. Sorry, Air Force One, eleven thirty-one Bravo is uh, three miles southeast. We'll make, be making a low pass over Troy Air Park from. Okay, we're getting close to the beam in numbers. We're right now at 87, so we're going to bring power back, bring the nose up. Air speed's uh, now in the flap setting, and we're going to start our descent. Like I said, we're going to we're going to do a little bit longer approach, a little bit more flatter. This would be like your your uh, first, you know, 10 or 15 takeoff and landings till you learn the aircraft. And you'll see, you know, you're going to still land very short. You typically could probably go into any grass strip in uh, North America that's published, which is this nor normal landing. That's a great aircraft to fly. We got a lot of customers out there that's uh, done a lot of different neat mods. Hey, Mexico traffic symbols turning final for one in Mexico. Mexico traffic experimental eight three two Fox Drop Sierra five miles east inbound for one eight Mexico. All right, flaps are all the way down.
keep a little bit more power in there. So I'm about 56, 57. Got a good crosswind there too. And keeping the power until, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep power in until our main wheels have touched. And once our main wheels have touched, then we'll chop the power. See how I'm just, I'm just riding it down and just, just let it settle. And keep the main, the mains touched, now I can chop the power. And nose is up, keep, and just do everything very nice and slow and gradual. And that's the key. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the, the demo flight today in the 750 Stoll, and uh, we'll probably, <coughs> excuse me, we'll probably have other demo episodes in the, in our different aircraft uh, later on. Um, we are going to have another virtual rudder workshop here coming up. So and sit back and enjoy the taxi back to the factory, and and. Uh, if you have any questions, you're, you're more than welcome to give us a call at the factory or uh, email us. Go to our websites, and we do have uh, builders assist, and guys like that can help you also. Or, you know, just get a hold of our customers, too. They're a great, great source of information out there. Shut it down and shut it down. All you do is on the Jabiru is our temperatures look good. We're just going to turn the ignition. Oh, well you enjoy it. And uh, then we just uh, turn off the master switch and everything else and we're done.